little bit about uh, what they do here at there, what their activities are, what sports they play. Um, so let's go ahead and start with you, Ella, and then go around from there. Go ahead. Hi, my name is Ella Aiello. I live in Braintree. My favorite activity at there is drama, and my favorite sport is field hockey. Hi, my name is Mason. I live in Randolph. I play football, and my favorite activity at there is rap and hip hop. Hi, my name is Michaela Berry. I'm from Quincy, and my favorite sport is lacrosse, and my favorite activity is rap and hip hop. Hi, I'm Sean Gupta, and my favorite sport is um i'm from mansfield and my favorite sport is tennis and my favorite and my favorite activity is chorus hi i'm gabriella montero i'm from dorchester and my favorite sport is volleyball and my favorite activity is sewing hi i'm nate jatskamer i'm from hingham and my favorite sport is hockey my favorite activity is drama great so thank you very much for sharing guys um, I'm going to switch over to a PowerPoint um, so I can show you guys a little bit about the program here at there before we get started on our turtle tracking. Um, so the, the program here at there uh, starts in fifth grade, as you know. Um, and in fifth grade, our science program uh, and our science program throughout really tries to focus on engineering and science together. So in fifth grade, the science component of our curriculum starts with forensics. Uh, where we study crime scene investigations, we study taking observations of a crime scene and learning from and how to tell a story based on the evidence that we find in a crime scene. Um, and then we actually learn how to process some of those different pieces of evidence like fingerprints. Uh, we learn how to read fingerprints and match fingerprints. We then do a unit on blood typing and understanding what you can learn from blood typing and what are the types of things you can um, deduce from blood types. We also did a unit on handwriting analysis where we um, learned how to analyze different aspects of handwriting, learned how to match handwriting, and also learned how to analyze documents in general in terms of being able to identify forgeries and uh, even fake money and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then from there, we moved into our engineering curriculum where we did a unit on robotics and uh, students programmed Spiros. Uh, and then they built chariots to ride uh, or to be driven by the Spiros. And they had the opportunity to race those chariots against each other. And we just kind of like to link that with the Roman history that they're studying in fifth grade social studies at that time. Um, after that, we do a unit on coding uh, where students use a platform called Pencil Code and they learn how to write code and, and use block programming uh, in order to build a blueprint for a house uh, that they build. Uh, and then the last thing we do in our engineering curriculum is a 3D modeling uh, project where they get the opportunity to build a bridge uh, and then we strength test the bridge and see, see which who builds the strongest bridge based on principles of different structures and which structures are the strongest. Uh, so we do a lot of hands-on laboratories and opportunity to uh, for kids to test and see what the strongest ones are. And then we wrap up the year with an introduction to marine science as a way to build a foundation for what they're going to learn in sixth grade. Um, and the beautiful thing is that we have this uh, partnership now with Beneath the Waves and Beneath the Waves is a nonprofit organization that um, was started by an alumnus from there. His name is Dr. Alston Gallagher. And so he has partnered with us and he is now establishing a lab on our Thayer campus. And he's gonna have his scientists working in the lab and then coming to our classes and um, sharing their research and having our students um, participate in their research. So our fifth graders will have the opportunity to learn about some of the work that they're doing, learn about some of the research that they're doing, and even get a chance to participate in, in the data collection for some of their research projects. Um, and so that's a good launching point for our sixth grade curriculum, which is marine science, where we talk about oceanography first, then we talk about sea turtles, which is a favorite. Um, we do a whole unit on coral reefs and the ecology of coral reefs, where we talk about how the animals and organisms that live in a coral reef interact with each other. Uh, and then we kind of move our way to kind of larger animals and understanding the impact we have on our oceans and how that impacts larger animals like whales. Um, and that usually happens in the spring when we start to see the whales migrating uh, north along the South Shore. And so if you walk out to the South Shore beaches, you can usually see whales swimming just right off the shore. Um, so that's fun. And then we get into, um, again, using our partnership with Beneath the Waves as an opportunity to, again, engage in some of the research that they're doing there collect some of the data for them, but then now be able to actually apply it to what we've learned about oceans uh, and ocean ecosystems um, to better understand what our impact is on the ocean. And then we end the year in sixth grade with a uh, engineering design project. 
um, where students are given the challenge of trying to solve the issue of plastics in our oceans. And what they do is they spend three days getting introduced to the design thinking process and then um, apply the design thinking process to designing a solution for the plastics issue. So they find some aspect of the issue that they uh, want to try and solve and then they uh, prototype and design some sort of device or um, method to be able to handle that problem um, and then they present it to a panel of judges. Um, and then in seventh grade, we move to a physical science curriculum. So students learn about energy, different types of energy. Uh, they apply it to the concept and, and to machines and mechanics. Uh, and we do a whole bunch of hands-on laboratories uh, or labs about uh, simple machines where they learn about pulleys and inclined planes and all that kind of stuff. And um, from there, they then go into building a Rube Goldberg machine. So they get the opportunity to combine all these different machines into a large complex device that does a very simple task. Um, and so it's, it's a fun project kids really get into and it really uh, demonstrates their understanding by forcing them to apply what they know about these simple machines to the way they build their project. Um, after that, they launch into a two month robotics uh, program curriculum uh, where they use Lego EV3 robots to learn about um, robotics and programming and kind of build off the stuff that they did with Spiros in both fifth and sixth grade. Um, so they do that and they, they have a number of different challenges that they all have to develop programs and, and um, solve using their EV3 robots. Uh, and then at the end of the seventh grade year, we do another engineering project where students will use the engineering design process to solve another problem, only this time we have the problem be something that's more local. And so we usually give them a challenge that relates to something that's happening at Bayer. So uh, two years ago, we did a project on composting. Uh, last year, we did a com uh, project on recycling uh, and really kind of tried to tackle the issue of how do we um, improve the composting and recycling at Bayer and, and both the accuracy of the way we do it, the amount that we do, uh, and, and the efficiency at which we do it. So, um, so those have been fun projects. And then eighth grade, we do a human anatomy and physiology program. And so uh, rather than just study systems in isolation, uh, what we do is we study uh, the systems in under kind of three different themes. And so we look at the themes of fitness, nutrition, and then health and disease. And um, in each of those different themes, we will hit on multiple systems, but understand how the systems kind of interact and work with each other to um, keep ourselves healthy, keep ourselves uh, nutritionally healthy, and also help us fight disease. And so, um, and all throughout the year in eighth grade, uh, there are little challenges that they'll do at the end of each of those themes, uh, where they, again, are applying the engineering design process uh, to solve a problem. And uh, probably the, the best, or the, the highlight project is our Lend a Hand project, where students are um, given a patient who has cerebral palsy, uh, they learn about what cerebral palsy is, and then they um, are asked to design a prosthetic device for this patient with cerebral palsy and um, help that person be able to do a, a task that maybe they couldn't do before because of their um, disease. And so uh, it's, a, it's a good project. It, gets, it teaches a lot of empathy and, and teaches kids to kind of take feedback from uh, a real person and, and get to understand uh, how they can really help that person uh, overcome whatever challenges they might have. Um, so that's our curriculum, but like I said, one of the highlights of our curriculum is our sea turtles. Um, when I asked my sixth graders at the beginning of the year, what are they most excited to learn? Uh, most of them usually reply that they're excited to learn about sea turtles and track sea turtles. And so we thought we'd give you a little taste of that. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start here first by um, asking my students here a few questions about um, what they remember in terms of sea turtles. And so the first question I'm going to have is uh, how many species of sea turtles are there? Uh, Nate. Um, there are seven species of sea turtles. And can you tell us um, what those seven species are? There's the leatherback, the loggerhead, the green sea turtle, the hawksbill, the flatback, the all Ridley and the Kent Ridley. Great, yeah. Um, so there's seven species of sea turtles. What do we know about each of those species? What do we What do we know about sea turtles in those seven species? Ella. They are all endangered. The Olive Ridley is the closest one to being off the list. Right. So yes, they are all endangered, and um, so that's why it's an important thing that we really want to try and study here in the sixth grade. Is we want to understand what our impact is 
on our oceans and how we're impacting sea turtle populations and maybe how can we help sea turtle populations um, kind of work their way off the endangered species list. Um, so one of the things we look at when we're tracking sea turtles is understanding their migra migration patterns and um, where they go and where they travel over the course of the year. And so we, we look at their migration patterns. So students, um, why, why do they migrate? Do we, do we know why these sea turtles migrate? Sean Beer. Um, well, they migrate because they need to nest or reproduce and they go back to the same beach that they were born on to create their nests. They also have to find food when they migrate. Good. So, um, so yeah, so they're, they're nesting and they're, um, that's one place thing they, they need to go back to the, where they were born, their natal beach in order to be able to reproduce. But then at the same time, they need to um, find food and the food's not always going to be where their nests are. So they, they do migrate a lot. They tend to move to warmer waters uh, in the winter time. And so, um, so tracking the sea turtles, understanding where they're going, understanding where we need to protect them uh, and where they're hanging out so we can protect those areas is all very important. So, um, you know, we have, we do have, you know, seven different species of tur sea turtle. They're all endangered and we want to better understand these turtles. Uh, and so we do by tracking them. And so the, what we do um, is for our class, what we do is we go to the conserveturtles.org website. Conserveturtles.org is just one of many websites that actually tracks sea turtles, um, but it's one that's located right here on the East Coast. Uh, and a lot of the turtles they track swim around through the Florida waters and in areas that we're familiar with. So um, it's a fun one to kind of use. Uh, but there are other ones that track turtles in the Pacific and turtles all over the world. And so um, you can find multiple ones on turtle tracking and tracking turtles from all over the world if you want to. But this is the one we use and so what we do is we normally um, in uh, December when we get back from our Thanksgiving break we give kids an opportunity to find one turtle that they're going to follow and then for two months they'll track that turtle and just see where it goes and see where it's migrating to and see where it's hanging out. See you know if it's hanging out in the same area for a while we know it's probably found a good food source. Um, if it's traveling a long distance maybe it's traveling back to its natal beach maybe it's traveling away from its natal beach and now heading back to where it found food before um, so it's kind of fun to track these things and see where they're going um, but one of the things that conserveturtles.org does um, in order to kind of generate excitement about sea turtles and get people to care about sea turtles and want to contribute to um, our protection of sea turtles is they do this thing called the tour de turtles um, and they run this thing where they take specific turtles on their list of turtles that are currently being tracked and they um, monitor them for a two month period over which they actually figure out how far the turtles going over the course of that two months. And then they keep track of them. And they, they create these bar graphs that show you the turtles um, going different distances and seeing how far they've gone over the course of the two months. And they, they just monitor it as a race. And so people will keep track of it. They'll see whether or not the turtle that's sponsored by Disney uh, is winning or is it the turtle that's sponsored by conserved turtles or who sponsored the turtle that, that is racing. Um, and so it's, it's a fun way to, to do this. And so um, it's, a, it's just it's a good way to engage people. So what I've done is I've had my students here um, take a couple of different turtles from the Tour de Turtles this year and take advantage of the opportunity to, to figure out some, and learn a little bit about those turtles. Uh, and so I'm going to have them share their information with you guys right now um, and share with you the research that they found when, when investigating these turtles. So um, we're going to start here with Gabby and she's going to tell you a little bit about her turtles. Gabby, go ahead. So the first turtle I researched was Alejandra. She's a green sea turtle and she's been tracked for 193 days. She's traveled for 1,021 miles and she was released on the western tip of Cuba and now she's swimming around the Nicaragua waters. And Ariel was the second turtle I researched. She's a loggerhead sea turtle. She's been tracked for 253 days and she's traveled for 1,162 miles. She was released on the west, eastern coast of Florida and she is now hanging out on the southwestern coast of Florida. Thank you. Um, my first sea turtle that I researched was Bordy 2. Um, she's a female loggerhead. She's been tracked for 241 days, um, and she's traveled 1,580 miles. Um, Bordy 2 was released on the western coast of Florida. Then she hanged out in the southern coast of Florida. Now she's hanging out in Cuba, down Cuba. 
Um, my second turtle was Jujube. She's a female leatherback. She's been tracked for 265 days, and she's traveled 6,160 miles. Jujube um, started out on the eastern coast of Costa Rica, and then she went up to the southern part of New Orleans. And then now she's hanging out in on the eastern part of Mexico. My first turtle I tracked was named Lulu. Lulu is a loggerhead sea turtle. She has been tracked for 252 days. She has traveled 1,660 miles. Lulu was released on the eastern coast of Florida. She is currently hanging out in the Atlantic Ocean between the Bahamas and Cuba. The second turtle I researched was named Maymay. Maymay is a green sea turtle. She has been tracked for 245 days. She has traveled 1,424 miles. Maymay was released on the northeastern coast of Costa Rica. She traveled up to the northeastern coast of Nicaragua and is currently swimming around there. Great, thank you, Ella. My first turtle is Pat. My first turtle I researched is Patches. He's a hawksbill sea turtle. He's been tracked for 259 days. He's traveled 744 miles. Patches was released on the island of Nevis and has traveled west to the west part of Puerto Rico. My second turtle is Rosalita. She is a green sea turtle. She's been tracked for 206 days. She's traveled 1,041 miles. Rosalito was released on the western part of Cuba and is now in, part of, in the western part of Yucatan. My first turtle was Sage. She is a female green sea turtle. Um, she has been tracked for 65 days and she has traveled 1,057 miles. She, Sage was released on the eastern coast of Costa Rica um, called, in a city called Tortuguer, and is now on the eastern coast of Nicaragua. The second turtle I researched was Sheldon. He is a male green sea turtle. He has been tracked for 115 days and has swam 1,643 miles. And he was released in Costa Rica and is now in the Yucatan Peninsula. The third sea turtle I tracked was Shelly. She is a female leatherback and she has been tracked for 316 days. She has traveled 6,800 803 miles. Shelly was released on the southeastern coast of Costa Rica. She was in the Houston area for a while, and now she is in southern Mexico near a city called Tabasco. The first turtle I researched was Spongy. She is an adult female hawksbill sea turtle and has been tracked for 216 days. She has traveled 1,238 uh, 1, miles. And she was released on July, 20, uh, July 20th, 2019, after nesting on, on Cade Bay's beach on the island of Nevis, near Dominican Republic. She's now in Grenada, closer to Venezuela and South America. The second sea turtle I researched was Ursula, a female loggerhead. She has been tracked for 209 days and traveled 1,620 miles. Ursula was released on July 27, 2019 from the Archie Carr National Wildlife Refuge in Florida. She is now near the area of Long Island, but the one in the Bahamas, not the one in New York. Great. So thank you very much for that, guys and, and, and girls. Um, so what I had them do is I had them take all that data and they put it into the spreadsheet that we, we shared between us. Um, and they put in all their information. And now what we can do is we can kind of take this information and try to learn from it and see, see, you know, which turtles may be winning the tour to turtle, or we can take this information and try to understand which types of, of turtles um, swim the farthest. And so um, we, what I've done is I took this data, I entered in some information that I got from the tour to turtle folks um, about how far each of these turtles swam in the tour to turtle this year in, in 2019. Um, and then we reorganized it into uh, this spreadsheet where you can see um, the different turtles in, in terms of order of um, which ones swam the furthest and which ones um, didn't swim as far as some of the others. And so um, what I might ask the kids is, is how many are, um, what are some of the things that we notice or what do you notice about the species of sea turtles that are part of the tour to turtle here? 
Michaela. Well, there's mostly leatherback screens and loggerheads, but there is a couple hawksbills. Yeah, so so we, we see leatherbacks and loggerheads and, and hawksbills and greens. Um, and what do we know about those species of sea turtles? Gabby. Um, well, you can see that the leatherback, it went farthest. And the hawksbill hasn't really gone very, hawksbills haven't gone very far. What do we know about those species of sea turtles also? What do we know about the, the like the loggerhead, the leatherback, and the green sea turtle? Sean Beer. Um, so the leatherback and the green and the loggerhead are the three largest, and the hawksbill is the fifth largest. Good. And um, so, so we have the first, second, third, and fifth, but what's the fourth largest sea turtle? Mason. Flatback. Flatback. Um, now, why, why don't we think the flatback is on this list? Why aren't we tracking flatbacks, too, if they're the fourth largest? Flatbacks are the only, are only found around Australia, and they never migrate into deeper waters. Good, right. So, so flatbacks only stay around, so only stay around Australia. So because these are all tracked being uh, here in the uh, U.S. and in the Caribbean and around the U.S., um, that's why we don't see them on there, right? But um, what we can then do with, with this data is we can then also graph it and, and take a look at who won the Tour de Turtle. And when we see that, we see that Juju B won um, and Shelly came in second. Uh, and both of those are the leatherbacks, so they swim the furthest and they're the biggest. So they kind of have an unfair advantage. And we know that leatherbacks in general will swim much further than other turtles. Um, so they actually, in the real Tour de Turtle, um, and when they do the data, they'll actually have two different categories. They do the leatherbacks as one race. Um, and the leatherbacks are what we call soft shell turtles because their their shell is actually or carapace is actually soft and leathery. It's not not hard like the turtle shell that you would normally think of. Um, so they have the soft shell race, which is all the leatherbacks, and that's what Juju B and Shelly uh, competed in. And then all the other turtles compete in what they call the hard shell race. Um, and you can see that the winner of this year's Tour de Turtle um, for the hard shells was was Sheldon. Um, and so, you know, it's again, it's a fun way to do this, but then as you do it over and over, you know, we, 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 we do when we're tracking sea turtles in class is we do weekly entries in a journal. We, we will look at where the turtles are going on a weekly basis. We'll look at the conditions of the water around them to see like, are they in the storm? Is it really wavy? Is it choppy? Um, what might be the reason that they're moving to where they are or where they're going? Um, so it's a, it's a fun thing to do. It's a fun that the kids get really attached to their turtles. Um, and enjoy kind of tracking their turtles. I've had people who have come back later on and been like, oh, I watched my turtle go here or go there. I got attached to one a couple of years ago where I was tracking it. It was moving up the East Coast, um, got up towards Massachusetts, uh, and it was starting to turn to winter, and I was worried about whether or not he was going to make it south, but by tracking him, I could actually see that he was making his way south, um, and I got to see that he was kind of going. I could actually then look at the water conditions and actually see but as the water was getting colder, he was moving further and further south. So it was, it was really fun to do. Um, so I actually get into it too. It's not just the kids. Um, so uh, that's kind of it for our um, little activity here and just a little taste of turtle tracking that we do here at there. So I want to thank you all for coming. But um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually um, click out of this, this slideshow and actually go to a gallery view where you can see all the students. Um, and give you an opportunity to ask us some questions. If you want to ask us questions about the activity, you can, or if you want to ask us questions about um, anything related to FAIR, uh, you can do that. So I'd love to have you guys just um, type into that Q&A box that you have on your screens um, and let us know what your questions are and we'll, we'll try to address them. Um, so let me see here, let me look at my Q&A. All right, so if you have a question you want to type it in, please go ahead um, and we'll, we'll kind of try to answer your questions. So we have a question here. So it's, uh, what is the average water temperature that the turtles tend to live in? Um, that's a good question. I want to see if these guys know it. We, I can't remember if we talked about it, but Sean Beer, why don't you go ahead and try to answer that question? Um, I'm not sure about most turtles, but like when I was tracking my turtle, I found that it was in like 27 to 29 degrees Celsius warm water. Yeah. So in general, like what we would usually say, probably just tropical waters is where we'll see them. So they're looking for that warmer water. Um, and it kind of depends, you know, some turtles will hang out in really warm water and others will go other places. Um, how do turtles get their shells? That's another question we have here. Mm -hmm. John Pierre, give it a shot. They're born with them. 
Yeah, they are born with them. So it's an adaptation that all turtles have. So it's not, you know, it's um, why we'd have to kind of look back at their evolution and, and try to understand it. But it's a, you know, um, it's something they have for protection. It helps protect them from sharks and their other predators. But, um, you know, they, they are born with them. So it's one of those adaptations that they have. It, sends, it serves them really well. It helps protect them. So because it serves them really well, they've continued to keep their shells and develop their shells. And they've evolved to just have, have shells um, when they're born. Uh, we have another one. Can you pick your own sea turtle? Michaela, why don't you answer that one? Yeah, you can pick your own sea turtle. It's really fun to like go through them and see which names you like or which ones you think are the coolest. You guys remember the names of your sea turtle? Oh, yeah. 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 Michaela, what was yours? Mine was Ariel. Ariel. And who's yours, Shabir? 42. 42. And Ella, what was yours? Mine was Caroline. Caroline. Mason, what was yours? Mine was Patches. Okay, good. All right, so we have some other questions here I want to get to. So um, what is your favorite project in sixth grade within all the subjects? Mm -hmm. What was your favorite project to do? Who wants to answer that one? Michaela, why don't you answer that? One of my favorite projects, well, other than sea turtles, was probably our Greek myths plays that we do in drama at the beginning of the year. We, because in sixth grade, we study a lot about Greek myths and like social studies. <clears throat> and in drama, we do Greek myths plays, we do different stories, and it was really, really fun. Okay, so we have another question here. Um, it says, uh, does the size of the turtle matter? Mm. Does anybody want to take that question? What do we notice about size and how far they migrate? Gabby, why don't you answer that one? Um, well, Leatherback is one of the bigger turtles, or it is the base, and um, you can you saw in the um, sheets that you pulled up um, that it traveled the far farthest. Good. Um, we have another one here. Like, um, who are their natural predators? So, so who are the natural predators of, of turtles? Nate, why don't you take that one? Um, their natural predators are like sharks. Yeah, that's one. That's a big one. That's the the shell is really helpful with those. What's another one, Shanvir? Um. Um, like humans, like us, because for like ivory poachers, they always they want the shells, or mainly the hawksbill turtles, because they def they tend to have like good designs, I guess. Yeah, yep. So yeah, there's definitely a lot of turtle poaching that happens, and people hunting hunting turtles for their shells. Um, Ella, what would you like to add to it? Um, pollution is a threat. Yes, pollution is definitely a threat to turtles. Um, sorry, we have another question here. How old was the oldest turtle that we tracked? Um. I think I don't I don't know that we necessarily looked at age. Um, we did see the different like number of days that they've been tracked, um, but we didn't necessarily um, really address uh, them in terms of you know when when they were born. Um, some of these turtles we find stranded or, or rehabilitated, and then when they're released, we put trackers on them um, so we can then follow them after they've been released, uh, after being rehabilitated or after um, being uh, rescued from from a beach or from being stranded somewhere. Um, we have another question here. What is the longest amount of time you've been able to track a turtle? Um, mm -hmm. So I'll take that question. Um, I would say uh, the longest I've seen is really a, a year. You don't really see them go much longer than that. Um, that's not to say it's never happened, but um, the trackers are really only designed to last for about six months. Um, but the way it works is when the turtle comes up to the surface, um, and the tracker is exposed to the air, the tracker then turns on and sends out a signal to a satellite in the space um, and then sends the signal. And if, it's, uh, if the turtle's onto the surface for long enough, um, then the satellite will take the data, take the tracking, and then put it onto this tracking website. Um, but if it, you know, uh, eventually the battery dies, and sometimes the, the trackers fall off. Um, and so, you know, sometimes we, we lose track and we've had people who have lost their turtle uh, in the middle of tracking them. So over the course of two months, they've lost their turtles before. Um, so yeah, that happens. Uh, we have another question here. What do turtles eat on a daily basis? Who wants to answer that question? Michaela, why don't you take it? Um, well, there's different diets for all different turtles. Like some are omnivores, carnivores, herbivores. Green sea turtles, they usually, they're herbivores. Um, so they usually eat like seaweed and kelp, but also like other turtles will eat like crustaceans, crabs, clams, mollusks. That's great. Um, all right, so we have a question here. Which of the seven species of sea turtles live the longest? Anybody want to take that one? 
Which one do you think lives the longest? Um, green? Oh, I think I know. Okay, Shamir, what do you think? Go for it. I feel like uh, I'm pretty sure it's the leatherback. Not completely yep. sure. Yeah, something. the leatherbacks do live the longest, so so that is a good answer. Good job. Um, that isn't something we talked a lot about, but it actually is a fact that you've picked up on, and that's great. Um, all right, so where is the most common place you find a sea turtle? Nate, why don't you take that one? Um, so on, on the website, um, a lot of turtles are found, like, near Florida in the Keys. Yeah, so they're going to be found in the tropical waters. Um, a lot of sea turtles can commonly be found. Um, near shore. So, so those of you who go on vacation um, and go snorkeling, a lot of times you can go find them. Um, if you tend to hang out in, in grassy areas or areas that have kind of grass and algae, um, a lot of times you'll find green sea turtles in those areas. Um, leatherbacks are a little bit harder to find because they do, since they are migrating and swimming so much, they tend to be further offshore. Um, but a lot of these sea turtles will hang out kind of in the coral reefs, in the shallower waters, um, closer into the, the shore. So um, so it's, it's not un, uncommon to go snorkeling and, and be able to see turtles. And uh, a lot of times when you go on excursions to go snorkeling, um, you'll actually hear about um, opportunities where, um, sorry, uh, you'll, you'll see opportunities where you can, or so, sorry, um, I had a technical problem with my headphone here, but, um, but yeah, what will happen is uh, if you go near the shorelines and go snorkeling near the shorelines, you can usually find them there. Um, so let's see what else we have here. We have a question. Do science classes spend any time in the CDL? Oh, a fair question. Ella, why don't you take that one? Yes, science classes spend time in the CDL, like in the fifth grade when they make chariot, when they do chariot races, they laser cut a chariot that they make. Uh, yep. Where, where else have you guys gotten into the CDL? Sean Beer. Um... I have another one for fifth grade, but uh, okay. yeah, it's, I remember last year with the mandala puzzles, we would have to like choose a certain shape and then we would design it on Google Illustrator or something, on Google Drawings, and then we would laser cut it to see if it matches the piece in the puzzle. Yeah, now what I would say about that is that um, pretty much all the classes that we have in science, since there is an engineering component to them, um, during those engineering uh, projects and units, um, usually those classes are all getting into the CDL. So pretty much fifth through eighth grade, um, there's at least one point in probably time, at least one project where they're gonna spend probably two weeks um, in the CDL. And then there's a lot of other projects and things that happen where going to CDL might happen. Some of the projects the kids will work on, sometimes they'll go to the CDL to, to do a little extra piece to the project or do something additional. Um, all right, let me take some more questions here, kind of building up here. So um, when we think of sea turtles, do we usually think of loggerheads? What do you guys think? Do you guys think of loggerheads? What's the current turtle you most commonly think of? Mason? I commonly think of green sea turtle. Yeah, same. Yeah, that's a very common one. I like if you go snorkeling in Hawaii, it's a very, mm -hmm. uh, the Hawaiian green sea turtles are usually what you'll see offshore. Um, it's a very, but loggerheads and green sea turtles are the most common. They're also the two types of turtles you'll see at the New England Aquarium if you ever go there. Um, all right, we got another question here. When turtles nest, how many eggs on average do they lay? Payson, go ahead and take that question. It depends because flatback sea turtles lay um, an average of 50 eggs, but then like say a leatherback, they can lay like 100 to 200, but only some of them live up to be their full age. Right, yeah, the chances of a, a, a turtle going from being a hatchling and coming out of the nest and making it to adulthood is actually not very good. Only about one in a thousand sea turtles will actually make it to adulthood and actually get to nest, um, which again is why we need to protect them. Nate, what else would you like to add? Um, like a lot of them um, die like when they're like born because um, they go, they think that they're going to the moonlight, but they actually go to like street lights. Right, that's one of the threats we talked about is artificial lighting. So when the turtles come out of the nest on the beach, um, and they see street lights from all the resorts and stuff on the beach, what they'll do is they'll crawl towards that light and not actually make it to the water. And so then when daylight comes around and all the predators come around, um, they'll, they'll sometimes get eaten um, or not make it to the water and dry up. So, so that can be dangerous for them. So we, like one of the things we try to do in conserving turtles and saving turtles is try to limit the amount of lights that are on 
along the beaches when we know there's nesting going on. Um, so we have another question here. What time of year do most turtles start to migrate? Hmm. Nate, why don't you take that one? Um, they start to migrate when it like gets starts to get cold to like November or December. Yep, so November, December, that's usually when we see them starting to migrate south. That's actually when we start seeing them get stranded on the Cape, because when they start to swim south, they'll swim along the coast. But when they get down to Cape Cod, they're swimming along the coast, and they end up in Cape Cod Bay. Uh, and then they can't figure out how to get out of Cape Cod Bay. Um, so they, they can't keep swimming south. Um, and so they get they end up getting trapped in cold waters, and they get what they call cold stun. And so um, a lot of people will walk the beaches on the Cape in November and December, uh, to try and find these cold stunned turtles and then take them to the Wellfleet um, Wildlife Refuge and they will um, get them taken care of, rehabilitated, and then released back into the warmer waters. Um, we have another question here. Uh, are you able to determine if they died within their tracking time? Um, that's a, we can't really tell. Like when we stop tracking a sea turtle, it's really hard to, to know whether or not it's because the tracker fell off, whether or not they died. Um, or whether or not the battery died on the tracker. So um, it, there's no, we, we, we try to stay positive and believe that it just fell off or that the battery died. Um, but sometimes the, real, re, the, the reality can be that, that perhaps the turtle died too. Um, all right, so we have another question here. Can you share some details about Thayer's recycling program? Um, who wants to talk about how recycling works at Thayer? Sean Veer, why don't you take that one? There's an activity that um, Miss Francois runs. And um, so in the activity, I'm pretty sure it's every term. So recycling gets done pretty well. So the at the end of the day, the people from the activity go to every class and they take the recycling bins and the trash and they empty and they put it into like the big dumpster bins, I guess, that the trucks take, I guess. Michaela, what would you like to add to that? Um, well, also, sometimes they make, like, sort of fun challenge with it, like, the, we, there's, like, if you have a reusable water ball, you can get a sticker, and, like, they put your name on a sheet, and, like, whoever class has the most stickers, like, for the, their, whoever's class has the most reusable water balls gets a dress down day, and so. Right. Like, so what kind of things do we recycle it there? What are the things that we're, we're usually able to recycle it there? What kind of hmm. stuff are you putting in the bins? Sean Beer. Uh, plastic water bottles. Yeah, what else do we recycle? Nate. Paper. Paper, right. So we do have single stream recycling um, and we do try to do our best. But again, that's that's one of those challenges that we tried to take on in seventh grade was to try and improve on our recycling um, and improve on people's education and understanding of what we're trying to recycle and, and try to uh, minimize our, our impact. Um, all right, we got some more questions here. How close to, to the shore do sea turtles get? Mason, why don't you answer that one? They go all the way up onto the shore until they find a good nesting spot. But when they're just swimming around, there could be in the coral a fringing reef, or they could just be um, out in the ocean. Good. All right, so I'm seeing a couple questions here. People are asking, what is the CDL and can you describe it? So can, can one of you answer that question? Michaela, why don't you, why don't you take that? Um, the CDL, it stands for Collaborative Design Lab. And so everybody has a class um, once a week, but once a rotating schedule, um, that's CDL. And so you, um, the CDL is like where you can go and make stuff. We have 3D printers, laser cutters, sewing machines. And we also have a green screen. And it's really cool. You just create stuff down there and you can make different, yeah. Mason, what else would you like to add? There's a, also a sticker maker, and in the only sixth and fifth graders get have that class, and um, you're able to uh, 3D print in your free time and laser cut in your free time, but you have a limit from 100 grams a term for 3D printing. Great. Um, I have another question here, and I'd be interested in the answer to this, is um, how's the online at-home learning going? What does your school day currently look like? Gabby, why don't you take that one? So it's going pretty good, I would say. And our schedule looks like so at 8.15, we have advisory until 8.20. And then we have 30-minute periods after that. And we have five periods in the day, and we usually have like 15-minute breaks in between every period. 
and we have an extra help period from 12.30 to 1.30, so you can go to your teachers and ask them for help. Anybody else want to add to that? Mm -hmm. So how would you guys rate the experience so far? Thumbs up, thumbs down, middle to middle? like it. Thumbs up. Innovative. Yeah. We're doing the best we can. So, um, all right, let's see what other questions we have here. Um, Questions about the turtle's average span of lifespan, average speed. Um, we tried to talk about those. Um, you know, I would say any any questions you have about the turtles, because um, I'm seeing we're we're kind of running long here. Um, if you go to the conserveturtles.org website, there's a whole thing where you can um, research the different species of turtles, uh, learn about each of the different species. Uh, you can start tracking your own sea turtle. Um, somebody asked a question about whether or not um, anybody's ever seen their turtle. Um, one of the things you can do is actually, if you go to the tour to turtle part of the website, you can actually look at tour to turtle events and you can see when they're actually releasing the turtles that are going to be participating in the tour to turtle. So you can actually, I know like July 26th in Florida at the Archie Carr Wildlife uh, Refuge, um, they're going to have a, a turtle release party uh, at the, at the wildlife refuge. So if you happen to be planning a vacation or something like that, you could plan your vacation around a sea turtle release and go down there. Um, in the past, there had used to do a trip uh, down to Florida where kids would have the opportunity to go snorkeling in the coral reefs, learn about coral, and then they'd actually go to the Archie Carr Wildlife Refuge and they'd actually visit it. Um, we're trying to see if we can bring that trip back, but we also have a trip um, where students get the opportunity to go down to the Island School, which is in the Luthra of the Bahamas. Um, and it's kind of a, they get to learn about the Island School down there, which does a lot of research and a lot of um, good work and, and stuff around um, sustainability. Um, but then there's also a sister school down there that we, we do an exchange with. So our students stay with their students for a week and then their students come up here and stay with our students for a week. So it's a, a fun trip that we're doing. So it's kind of hard to do all of those things. Um, so I see, I'm sorry, just I'm trying to scan these questions. Um, is there a second fifth grade classroom? Um, that fifth grade classroom, there's, there's one section of fifth grade, but and so you guys are all in a homeroom and you have your math class, your English class, um, and social studies class all together. Uh, but then what happens is you'll travel to your language class, which is Latin, and you'll travel to your science class with me. Um, and you'll have an opportunity to um, kind of travel around, but you'll generally be all together in that same homeroom. So, the, so the, the fifth grade is um, only big enough to have one section, but you guys do get to mix it up and move around and get through different parts of the building. And then through sports and the activities that you do, you get to kind of mingle and, and get to know some of the sixth graders and the seventh and eighth graders. Um, we have snack every day where sixth graders and fifth graders will, will have snack together. So you get to know them that way. Um, so these guys have all befriended a number of the fifth graders. Um, and so, so yeah, you see a lot of that. Um, just trying to look through these other questions. Um, turtle hatchings happen all throughout the year, usually during warmer months, but it kind of depends on where, um, where they are uh, and where, um, sorry, in terms of turtle hatchings, uh, you know, where, where their nesting beaches are and what, what the temperatures are like and what the climate's like. Um, but a lot of times, usually in the springtime, March to, March to June, um, depending on the beaches. But you can, again, uh, go online. You can, and if you were to figure out where some of the nesting beaches are, you can figure out when they're, when they're mostly protected and when those nestings are happening and, and sometimes see it. Um, on the Pacific side, of the US and California, they do have something called an Aribada where all of Ridley's will all come on the beach at the same time. And so you'll actually see thousands of turtles crawl up on the beach all at the same time to nest. Um, and again, that can happen kind of in the springtime and there are specific locations in California that are considered nesting beaches where we see this happen. You can um, find out more about that. Um, just trying to again, address, address these questions. Um, what do you guys do during your 15 minute break? What are you guys doing with your 15 minute break in between classes? Um, Ella, why don't you take that question? During my 15 minute break, like I sometimes like go outside and have like a snack or play with my dog. Okay, Mason, what do you do with your 15 minute break? During my 15 minute break, I usually go on Zoom and chat with my friends before class. Okay. Anybody else want to Sean Beer? Uh, I usually like play a bit of my guitar and I also um, like go outside a bit, take a small walk, just like to 
Get like, some fresh air. Great. Nate, what do you want to add to that? Um, I usually like go on Zoom and talk with my friends, but I also um, do a little bit of my homework. Okay. Good time to get some homework done while you're thinking about it. All right. I just have a few more questions here. Um, what are some other leadership skills you practice at there? So can anybody talk about leadership and opportunities you've had and, and kind of things you've learned and been able to develop as leaders? Anybody want to take that? Hello. So at the beginning of the year, an example of leadership like experience was when we went to Camp Wing together, which is where we like all worked together to like do like rope courses and like puzzles and other games like that. Anybody else? Can anybody talk about what um what our student ambassadors are or what they do? Sean Beer, you want to talk about so, that? So um, the student ambassadors, they so they not only read uh, read the like the sorry the announcements in the morning, but they also like organize like some events at Sarah, such as like they organize the tiger tour the tour guides. I'm pretty sure sometimes they also organize like other events that may happen with within the community. Yeah. So we have that. And what, who, who can talk about what admissions ambassadors are? Yeah. Are any of you an admission, admissions ambassador this year? No. So the admissions ambassadors are people who will give tours and, and give tours to prospective students. Oh. So when you came, those oh. students are, are getting the opportunity to be leaders and, and share our community with um, prospective students. Um, and then, you know, we have uh, every new student who comes into the seventh and eighth grade uh, will be partnered with a, a buddy in their advisory. Um, and so those are leadership opportunities where those kids can get the opportunity to connect with our new students, help them um, transition to Thayer and, and get to meet different people as well as uh, learn, learn their way around, learn the different teachers, learn how things work, learn how our systems work um, and all that kind of stuff. I see another kid uh, question here about how many kids are usually in the eighth grade. Um, our eighth grade usually runs around 70 to 80 students. Um, so we, you know, depending on, on enrollment and, and all those kinds of things, but usually there's about Anywhere uh, from like around 70, 70 students, um, sometimes almost 80 students can be in the eighth grade. Um, so it's a good number. Uh, let me see what else we have here. Um, are you guys planning to go back to school for the end of the year? Uh, if I knew the answer to that question, I, I wish I did. Uh, but I think it's, you know, kind of keeping an eye on what's going on. I think, uh, you know, we have some different events that happen at the year with eighth grade graduation and stuff like that, that we hope to be able to still hold when we when we um, get the all clear and have the ability to kind of um, get together again but I think it's still it's, it's a little early to be able to make any sort of um, predictions or, or be able to say what what's going to happen uh, in terms of our uh, return back to school this year um, we have another question here what is the basic dress code during the week so who would like to take that question Mason why don't you talk about the dress code so on Mondays you have to be a little bit more formal so, like, for boys, you have to wear um, a tie with a collar shirt, and you have to wear khakis and a belt. But, say, from Tuesday to Friday, you could wear khakis with a polo shirt. You can wear khakis with a fair sweatshirt or a fair shirt, but you don't have to wear a tie. Anybody else want to add to that? Um, I have a question here from, from another student here. So for the turtle contest, would a better measure be to make a total distance traveled by a number, uh, divided by the number of days to make it a fair contest? Um, what do you guys think? Do you hmm. think it'd be better to just take the total distance traveled or do you think it's better to divide it by the number of days that they've been tracked for? Well, yeah, I, I would agree. Sean Beer, go ahead. I would, I would agree because um, well, it makes it rather more average, and sometimes if the, the averages, I feel, would be more fair because, like, if you do, because sometimes, like, the smaller turtles, if they get, like, washed by a really strong current, then they'll get, like, a lot more miles, and it might not be as fair to, like, the strong, to the, like, the bigger turtles. Right. I like that. Um, so, so what I would say is um, the way, so the, the tour to turtle is actually started and ended on specific dates. So it's not based on, so how long they've been in the water, how long they've been tracked, 
um, is a little bit different than what they measure for tortoise turtle. And I'm sorry if I didn't make that part clear. Um, so yeah, that the tortoise turtle, when they start tracking, they all the turtles are already in the water. All the turtles have been there. Um, they start a, on a specific date once all the turtles are in the water, and then they start measuring it. They measure it for a specific um, equal amount of time, and then they compare the distance traveled by each of the turtles during that time. So yeah, there's some different things that might play into that and might affect it being fair, but Again, it's just a, a fun way to, to track the turtles, a fun way to keep track of where they're going um, and, and hopefully engage a bigger audience so people get in, uh, involved in um, and, and wanting to know more about sea turtles and learn more about sea turtles. Um, so we have another question here. Where would you go, uh, where would you get their shirts? Oh. Gabby, go ahead and answer that question. So there's a campus store over in the high school area and they have a bunch of sweatpants, sweatshirts, um, yeah, shirts, anything you want there. Anybody else want to add to that? Nate, you want to add to that? Um, so we usually call like the campus store where you get everything, um, the cage. Yep, also called the cage. Um, there's also an online store, uh, and I'm not sure. It's, I'm not sure it's always uh, accessible um, from the website. Uh, there are certain times during the year where they'll open it up, um, and you can order stuff online uh, as well. So there's some different ways to, to get your um, apparel. Um, all right, so I have three more questions here. We have one, do turtles typically travel in groups? Um, they're not uh, the types of organisms to, to, to travel together. They do travel usually solo. Um, sometimes you will run into a pod of, of sea turtles um, all together just because of their, there's a common feeding ground there. But again, you have thousands of turtles that'll all emerge from a nest at one time. Um, and then they'll all travel into the ocean and kind of some of them will get traveled by or carried by currents um, and they all kind of get dispersed. And so they are very singular animals. But um, then you do have times like the Adibada I was talking about earlier with the olive ridleys where they all come up on the beach at the same time. It's not because they're traveling around all at the same time, but um, so like, they don't typically travel in groups, no. Um, the average lifespan of a turtle depends on the species of turtle um, and depends on, on what kind of turtle you're talking about. But, you know, in the age old question asked by Nemo, whether or not turtles live to be 100 years old, um, it is true, they can, um, but not all of them do. And particularly the smaller ones don't live as long um, as some of the, the larger ones. Um, the maximum depth the turtle can reach beneath the ocean surface. Um, the one that can swim the deepest is the leatherback. Um, in terms of how deep they can go, um, I would be uh, lying if I told you I knew right off the top of my head, but um, you know, I'd have to get back to you on that one. Uh, it's a good question, but um, they don't generally tend to go very deep. They do um, gen generally, again, tend to stay in shallow water, tend to stay near coral reefs where they have a good food source. Um, and then, but the leatherback, again, because of the fact that it, it does migrate so far, it does venture out in the deeper waters. Uh, the leatherback does have the ability to hold its breath for 45 minutes to an hour. Uh, and in doing so can go deeper. Um, but none of the turtles are really designed to really uh, withstand the pressure you go under when you start diving deep. And so they don't always uh, dive very deep because um, there's not much food they're gonna eat. Um, next question says, instead of wearing nice clothes, can you wear a fair casual clothes? Um, uh, Nate, why don't you answer that question? Um, so you can, but you can't wear um, like coats or anything inside. You can wear like their sweatshirts and stuff. Mason, you want to add to that? You also can't wear like a Nike shirt that has a big logo. At least it has to be posted outside. Right. So any any of the clothes you wear on on Tuesday through Thursdays need to be um, clean. They need to be um, you know just just presentable, and you know you can't have any big logos on the clothes. So so usually you have to wear some sort of uh, if you wear a sweatshirt, just the logo in the on the chest is fine. Um, when it comes to you know any, anything else, it's uh, you know we used to have a collared shirt pro policy, but that's that's uh, gone. So you can wear just like a solid color T-shirt and then a um, a sweatshirt over that. Uh, and again, the, the main thing we're trying to do is that people look presentable um, and they look uh, you know ready and and they're taking their their job at, at Thayer seriously that they're considering you know they consider their um, they're coming to fair and they're coming to school is, is kind of like their job and they want to be as presentable as possible when they're there and, and when they come to, to, to their job. Um, how many kids in the seventh grade? Um, I don't actually know how many kids are in the seventh grade for next year. I do know the average tends to be right around 60. Um, 
but again, that can vary depending on um, the number of kids uh, and, and, and who enroll and, and depending on, on different things. So like, I know this year's seventh grade is a little bit um, smaller than average, uh, but we have, you know, we, they, I've seen sixth grades that are right around 60. I've seen them get up to 70. Uh, so it really depends on enrollment. And I'm sorry, I don't have a number for you in terms of how many people um, will be in the seventh grade for next year. Uh, who wants to talk about girls dress code? We have a question here about girls dress code. Michaela, can you address that? Oh, so on Mondays on dress up day, we girls can wear either like dress pants, skirts, or dresses. You can't wear jeans that day. And then for the rest of the week, you're allowed to wear, well, a shirt things, well, not the same as boys, but like no big logos, but you can wear like tiny logos and like just shirt. Well, you can wear different shirts. And then um, for like pants, you can't wear leggings, but you can wear jeans that aren't like denim jeans and blue. Good. Um, yeah, I, we, we recently I actually changed our dress code. So we were trying to make it more unisex. Um, and kind of make it more, more fair to say, you know, you kind of wear whatever you want to and, and whatever, you, you know, like we didn't want to set it up as boys and girls can do this. Um, so, you know, it used to be that the girls could only wear dresses on Mondays uh, and now we want them to be able to wear pants and blouses and all that kind of stuff. Um, the boys uh, used to have to wear ties, um, but in order to, to recognize it and kind of more make it user friendly for everybody and all types of people, um, we, you know, opened it up to be able to, to wear uh, and not have to wear ties, not have to wear um, uh, collar or, you know, necessarily um, button down dress shirts. Um, all right, we have one, a couple more questions here. We have one, do turtles have gills? Who wants to answer that? Sean Veer, why don't you answer it? Um, they don't. Uh, so they come up for auction every two to six hours, depending on the species. Great. Um, and we rely on the fact that they have to come up to the surface to breathe. Um, for the turtle tracking, because like I said earlier, um, they have to come up to the surface in order for their trackers to be um, to be tracked. And so when they come to the surface, the trackers turn on, they get picked up by a satellite, and then the satellite downloads the data onto our computers. Um, all right, we have one more question here. The question is, what grades are you guys going into? Ella, why don't you take that one? We're all going into seventh grade next year, so we're in sixth grade now. Given the fact that we're in distance learning, I just asked my sixth graders to participate in today's activity. Um, but, you know, so all these guys are going into seventh grade next year. So if you're coming into seventh grade, you'll get to meet these guys. Okay. Um, so I'm, I'm seeing we're running here just over an hour and um, I don't want to really take up too much time more of your time, but I do want to thank you all for participating today. I want to thank my students for being a part of this and answering all your questions. Um, before we leave, I just want to let them share their email. So they're going to hold up a sign and, and share their emails with you. So if there is somebody you uh, might want to ask a little bit more about what it's like to commute from a certain town or you want to ask them another question, you can certainly email them that. I'll put up my email as well. Um, so if you're interested in um, ever, you know, just um, contacting me uh, and, and getting to ask me questions or whatever, uh, whether I can ask you to ask, answer the questions for you, um, I'll, you know what, I'm going to type in the message into our chat here. So I'll type my email in there so you can just link to it that way too. Um, but anytime you guys have any questions or you want to know more, um, please feel free to reach out to me. You can reach out to anybody in the admissions department who you've connected with uh, when you visited. Um, and they'll forward your questions to me and then we can forward them to the student or, or whatnot. So, so whether you've got the email here right now. Um, you want to email me directly or email anybody through admissions, we'd be happy to answer any other questions you have. Um, but I do want to thank you all for coming. Uh, thank you all for being a part of our very first virtual Tiger Day. And uh, we will see you all later. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.